Manzano is not in charge of outreach. So I'm sure there's outreach committee members here. Those are the people who should have participated and completed the outreach plan. There was also a strategic <coughs> plan that wasn't completed and turned in. The treasurer and Anthony Manzano is not in charge of the strategic plan. But of course, when they say the funding's frozen, it doesn't matter why, the treasurer's fault. I don't mind. I'm here to take care. Absorb all the information and questions they could use. Because you know what, I still have all the answers and there is no claim of, of misuse of money, defrauding, uh, neglect of services. So what it is, is there were other people, including the membership and outreach committee and, and perhaps executive officers, who didn't fulfill other requirements. And you heard Connie mention today, an outreach plan. It, all of you know that I'm not in charge of outreach. So point the finger at someone else. Then when the strategic plan comes up, well, I'm not the president any longer. So if the strategic plan wasn't put together, point the finger to someone else. So I'm here to answer any questions you might have. Of course, like I said, this is, this is gonna stem from funding, but the difficulty we've had as a board, I think relates to the disenfranchisement and selectiveness of serving our communities. We cannot discriminate against our neighborhood council community. And what happened is we've had Actually, stakeholders- kind of going off the subject. It is a little bit. Let's focus on the numbers. Yeah. So let me go ahead and wrap this up, and then I'm going to take some questions from the general public first. If anybody, can we fill out a public comment card? If you do have any questions, I'm going to start with the board members, so feel free. Mr. Mon uh, they're in the back. There's a in the back, so Stop feel questions. free to please submit them. Uh, I, think, I think, Sandy, this is an agenda item. We can probably take public comments on the issue first. Okay, fine. Uh, so so please ask, that way we can hear the public comments on it, and then the board members can ask questions. I think you should advise the public or the stakeholders of the other things that here that they can do, fill out cards. So we don't have what we have right now. Either filling out cards for this issue, so we don't waste time for other issues and then out there. So advise them that they can fill out those public comments on other issues yes, that are here. Yes, any issue that you have, stand please, please, on any agenda item. Do we have any public comment cards now?
someone slipping, we all slip. And the biggest ones that are going to slip is basically the community and the children. So as representatives, as public servants, as servants of our fellow brothers, you know, we have to take it to that next level of being our brother's keeper, not pointing the finger because you're actually pointing at yourself. It's a family unit. And uh, basically, the community is a family. And uh, for me, I've seen a lot of, you know, things just getting unresolved. And you all are very intelligent people. And if you see things coming up, I think you could uh, premeditate certain situations and act on them. If we have to raise up new agendas to get these things taken care of and done, let's do that. Let's accommodate one another because we're not actually accommodating ourselves. We're accommodating the community to get these things taken care of. That the one team, I, I, what I've always seen in a lot of political, I deal more on a personal, uh, spiritual level because I work with people with recovery, and basically everybody is in terms of the symptom called more. Well, we got to stop putting personalities instead of putting forth principalities. Principles before personalities. And for me, you guys can take care of this very easily without miscommunication or without uh, 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 just uh, misinformation, miscommunication, it can be taken care of. I believe, I don't know, because everybody has personal things going on. You guys are volunteers and I respect all of you. And as I suggested to Anthony the other day, accommodate the people that don't have maybe the same schedule. Because that one team, as we all, when we said the pleasure of the one of allegiance, it's one nation under God. <laughs> okay, any other general questions? Okay, I'll go ahead and start with board members, Mr. Johnson. Uh, I'll defer to Mr. Johnson. Okay, let's start with, we'll start that one. Okay, you know, you guys are going to be in the old board. What well, makes you think you can't respect what the other old board approved? If you say, well, that's what they did, you know, we're in the old board. Oh. It is on that what he said. It's not my fault that the old board and this and that. I'm not saying it chronologically like he said, because I don't work like he does. Okay? And for us, shame on us for not giving that money to that karate group, our kids from El Sorino. This is what we're here for. And this is the only thing we are finding that we have the power. Anything else that all 94 MCs do in LA means nothing except the money that they control. That's the only thing that we have power on. And not to give it to them free when they qualify for it, as that group did, and those kids deserved it, and you sat on your high horse. Oh, where's the new part? And they, oh, you know, and shame on that treasure. There's a lot of things that are not on the bylaws or on the Brown Act or anybody's laws. He's the leader, just like you're the leader, and there's chairs here from committees. Whether we do right or wrong, it falls on the leader. He has a fiduciary duty to see that these things don't find him to get done. He needs to get on our back. Even though it's not on the bylaws from the Brown Act, he needs to take it upon himself to see that it gets done. Because it does fall on him. The money does fall on him, even though the rest of us fall for not doing what we need to do to make, it, make him shine and make him look good. Okay, if he looks bad, we all look bad because we all can do our job to facilitate it for him. He's only one person and there's supposed to be 22 people here. Okay, so these people are right. We don't got it together. And it's not your fault as the president and it's not his fault as the, as the treasurer. Something's missing here, you know. And everything you said about the report it was too long. Uh, people here don't relate to it. They're not aware of it. I still don't know why the funds were frozen. You should have said, A, this and this are reasons why they froze our funds. When are we going to get our funds? What's missing? When is that lady over there going to give us a class? She should have given us a class here before any of this garbage started and let her go home or whatever, you know? She doesn't deserve to sit there and all that and going out of her way to help us help ourselves. Okay. Um, I mean, going back to the karate, you can make it seem like we don't want to fund that karate. Okay, wait, before we, let me, let me literally clear you what that. issue with karate. Okay, the karate class and my, the committee, I was there, I was president with Mr. Masano, Ms. Chani Membreño, Ms. Yoli Garcia, and Ms. Angela Duarte were there. And my Rosemary was there. That, that day, the committee decided to fund the $500. And what they
government, they mentioned working on water action, trying to put everything together to get to, to give to that and require me to give it to. I don't never remember talking to you on anything, anything on the NPG. I didn't really don't this last paragraph, it's a long paragraph, and you're giving yourself a lot of credit for what has been accomplished in this project. Mr. Mantegis? I, I think there's still time to fix this. I think we're looking back and it's what we're trying to do late twenty fingers, I think we can solve this. So I, I think we should just move forward, get this training, get together, meet regularly, and just take care of it. Mr. McGuire? Um, good break. Mr. Mantegis? Yes. Um, I think we're changes which have been good and which have been bad. Some have been um, favoritism, some have been not uh, reciprocated between certain people in the committee. Times are really hard for us to get together, hours, people are busy. <coughs> but I can truly say that being here already for almost two and a half years, um, I have seen this last fiscal year was funded tremendously. I'm very pleased to say that. I know that this fiscal year we've already lost three months. And all of this in-house bickering and fighting between one and the other, and you on that side of the table and me on this side of the table, it's not working. We really need to leave all of our personal business outside the door, control ourselves within this room so that when people see us, they don't look at us as if we are incompetent, fools, uh, we don't take things seriously. We're not giving them the benefit of the doubt that they sit here for hours and we don't get anything done. So that's my that's my opinion. I know that we can fix it. We all have to work together. First of all, I want to commend Mr. Mandano for, for the produ producing these documents here tonight. I think this is a great 
first good step in creating the structure that is needed on the Budget and Finance Committee. I'm not going to spend time belaboring comments that are already made, but I think the general consensus here is that the Budget and Finance Committee is probably one of the more paramount committees on this board. It needs a regular, set, formal meeting schedule that is publicized and made open and transparent to the whole community. This job here, this like a new document, this is like this should be a cooperative group effort of the committee. It should not fall on one person's lap. I think I'm liking the comments I'm hearing here tonight because first of all, we're staying away from making this pet, petty and personal. We need to move on. We need to come I mean, hearing what's been said tonight, the solutions are so elementary. Uh, I think with the support of the dumb personnel, we should be able to get resolutions to the issues. But the one thing that Cynthia brought up, the big three, the personal pettiness has got to end. We have a member that is not, my old boss, Jeff Harrison, taught me way back in, in my first summer camp job was it's a program, it's the people you work for, and your selfish lap in terms of priority. And when we start putting our wants before the wants of the people we're supposed to be serving, then we're going to get anything accomplished. So that said, let's work on the solutions. Let's listen to what Don has to say tonight, and let's make this be a start of a more productive era for this incarnation of the board as we move to our left next election cycle. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Betty, it's all yours. Eleven of us. They have either in the computer or personally. Okay. It took yours, Mike. Now we include the twenty minutes. Yeah. Twenty minutes. Yeah. So yeah. there are a couple that has to take it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the twenty minutes one, so that we will all get credit. Uh, have you all completed the registration form after you took the training? Is this because on our according to our records, we used to have seven board members who have not completed the training. Can you name those people out? I don't have that. However, I'm going to have each one of you complete the form. So this, this way I can take it back to each of the department and make sure that you don't get a credit form. Okay. I would just like to do a follow-up on what she said on those uh, seven people. Part of those seven people are probably no longer members because they haven't been here for ages. They never did the training. Those aren't the ones you're referring to. Okay. okay. But still, we have the vacancies. Okay. Okay. I'm going to please pull your question up to the end of the training, okay?
no copies um, and any documentation. Submit timely all original receipts, invoices, payment, uh, documentation to the treasurer for the monthly reconciliation process. So beginning this fiscal year, July 1st, we no longer um, ask the neighbor council to submit quarterly reports. It is now on a monthly